Howdy y'all. I think we came up with a decision for what we're gonna do with 4G's engine. Stay tuned. You might remember from the last episode that the engine from 7J, 6B9293, is the casting number. The one from 4G is a 2A3317. 5T3174W. It's highly obscured by those cooler lines for the oil. I want to say that's an 8B3746 or 48. Between 4G, 7J, and the 5T engine we just looked at, we know that not all of the parts can be used in all of these engines. So they're a little different, so it pays to make sure that you have the right parts for the right block number. How do you find out? I don't know. The parts books? Maybe. But it's hard to tell what somebody has changed and what somebody hasn't. Over here on the table, we've got the bearings laid out from 4G and 7J, which is turning out to be an excellent donor. This was the worst piston that we actually pulled out of 7J. They don't have terrible wear. The rings aren't bad. This one had some broken rings, and it has a lot of pitting. While there is a little bit of wrist pin wear here on the wrist pins for the pistons, it's pretty minor. And within specs and tolerances, according to the book. These are the rings that came out of that piston. There are two that came out intact. And one broken compression ring. It was the one in the top. And both of the oil rings were also broken. We did recover most of the parts, but you could see in certain areas where a piece of that ring rolled over in one of the sleeves and actually put a little indent in it. This is number two, where that piston came out of. And you can see on that valve that there's rust and a lot of pitting and a lot of damage to that upper cylinder head. My guess is, is the pre-combustion chamber was leaking and allowed antifreeze to get inside the cylinder. The rest of this Still doesn't look too bad. Most of these valves look pretty good. They've definitely been done before. This head's definitely been off of there. And the pistons are salvageable. Although it had water in it, the valves were free as well. There's definitely some designed improvements between 1939 when 4G was built and 1940, 1941 when 7J was built. Caterpillar had an interesting theory right here on the 4G bearings. You can see that in practice. And that practice is the use of these shims. Now these would go in between the, the lower and upper bearing. And it was built to save maintenance costs somewhat. But the way that this worked is there was various shims that would go in between the upper and lower sections of the bearings. And you could buy different thicknesses of these shims and kind of tighten up the tolerances on the crankshaft. Now we noticed between 4G and 7J here, that in the book, the bearings went from individual part numbers for every bearing to groups. In essence, when you replace the bearings, you replace them all. My guess is that people were actually just replacing parts of these, adding shims and different ones, and it probably caused some premature failures. But that's just speculation on my part. Another major improvement that CAT had in their bearing caps is like these on 7J, are substantially thicker and heavier duty than the ones over here on 4G. And there's a shot side by side for comparison. Another major improvement in these bearings that we've noticed is the larger oil groove. You can see on here, compared to the ones on 7U, they are substantially thicker and larger and will accommodate a lot better flow of oil. From talking to other cat enthusiasts and experts, We've determined that this is actually a common failure on the 4G machines in these outer bearings on the end cap and the front cap. And then here on the back one where ours failed and it started flaking apart, you can see how small this oil groove is. You can also see on this upper bearing where it carried parts and pieces that broke out of there up and around and through these other bearings. While not brand new, these bearings out of the engine on 7J are in excellent shape. And let me show you why these are better than the ones that are on 4G. So here's the facts that we found out about 4G and 7J off of the engine blocks. According to the numeric code on 4G's engine block, 
That engine was cast Tuesday the 15th of February 1938. For comparison, the 7J block was cast Monday the 28th of October 1940. That was not too far apart in production runs, but there are some major differences between the 7Js and the 4G models, at least according to these engines. While the rods, crankshaft, front covers, bell housings, a lot of the parts are still the same, there are some differences. The intermediate front cover is different, and the pistons carry a different part number, although the bore and size is the same. And the differences that we noticed in the pistons are these right here, these oil holes in here. There's two on each oil ring for 7J. As opposed to 4G right here, which actually has four holes for oil, top and bottom. According to the book here, for the RD4 D4 4G series tractors, uh, R4G 9986 is at the very end of the production run in 1939. So we know that the last RD4s rolled off the line sometime in 1937, and the first D4s rolled off the line in 1938, starting with 4G 8858. That puts R4G 9986 squarely at the end of the production run, almost at the very end. And we're speculating that they were just using up old blocks that they had. Because that casting and that casting part number actually goes back into the RD4s. From the RD4 D4 to the 7J D4s, which is the next iteration, they started in 1939 as well. We know that our parts tractor 7J D4 is a 1941 by the given serial number. But the block for that machine was made in 1940. So, where does that leave us? Well, we had a couple of questions to ask, and we really wanted to make that block work on 4G. Given that this block didn't have any issues, ideally, we'd just put new bearings in it, new rings, and we'd be good to go. But the problem is, I'm not going to be able to find bearings, especially the bearings that take the spacers that actually fit in this block. Because even without the spacers, the bearings from this block will not fit in 4G's block. We measured it, we checked it, there's no way it'll work. As much as we would absolutely love to use this engine block, 4G 9986, with the matching rear end tag in that tractor, we simply can't because I cannot find the bearings to make this engine block work. So here's the good news. Both these engines are the same bore and stroke. They're virtually the same. They're both D4400s and both will actually bolt up in that tractor. And I know what you're thinking. What about the block in 5T? Isn't it the same? Yes, it's a D4400, but it is another block number entirely, another bearing group, a completely different animal, not even worth the time to take it apart right now and look. So we can't find bearings for that one. And this one's in relatively great shape comparatively. So where does that leave us? Our initial plan was to just slap this back together. But when we found this last bearing, that threw a monkey wrench into everything, because there's no way I'm going to stick this back in a running machine. And sadly, it actually was the last part that we took off of that machine that threw the monkey wrench in the whole works. With this option completely gone, what we're left with is this one. And longevity-wise, and for something that's going to stick around, these bearings are going to last one heck of a lot longer than these would, even if they still worked. We've already put a substantial amount of work into this tractor, under this sheet, well protected, and the belt pulley and everything, and new parts and upgrades. So, there's no sense putting an old worn out engine on it. So we use this engine off of 7J for 4G. Then what do we do with the tag? Well, uh, that's been the sticking point. But, I think we're going to take the tag off of 4G's engine and stick it on this one. And I know that seriously raised some eyebrows. And I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to hide anything. Full disclosure, everything's up here on YouTube. And if we do decide to sell 4G, which we won't, this block's going to go with it. Unless, of course, I get tired of tripping over it in the shop and decide to move it or sell it or get rid of it. But for now, nothing's changing. And let's face it, this project has never been about the D4. It's never been about selling it. This whole project is about doing something that my son always wanted to do and seeing it through to the end. 
And from what I've learned, when Caterpillar went out to fix a D4, maybe they were working on a 4G D4, and it needed a new engine block because a rod went through the side. Well, it's not like they were digging around looking for an old engine block to put in there. They probably got a new one. They probably upgraded it. We're actually fortunate that 4G is a numbers matching machine, but it just can't sustain itself. And because of the parts availability, others have to give parts up so that it can move on. Because the numbers for the early D4 were so low, even the chances of finding another block or tractor in that runnable condition that we could use for parts for 4G are super, super slim. And frankly, I don't think it's necessary or worth the struggle. Not to mention the budgetary constraints, even if I could find one. Back to the point about cat mechanics switching out the parts when needed to a new part, new part number. They were also supposed to switch the tags. So it's quite possible to find units that have a matching tag that don't have the original block. I'm not a never say never guy, but I do not intend to sell 4G. Ideally, I'd like to pass it on in the family, donate it to a museum, or something to somebody that would appreciate it for what it is and the documentation that's here on YouTube, if and when the day comes. Yeah, I'm not going to live forever, I know that, but I got a lot of years that I'd love to just enjoy it. And I will have a lot more time to enjoy it with these good bearings and good parts in a newer, better engine. And before you're too hard on me, it's really bothered me. I really, really, really wanted to keep this tractor original but I can't afford to make new bearings for it. I know that's something somebody's gonna say, and we even thought about just making the one bearing for the back of it right now, the one that's damaged and kind of matching it with the others. I don't think that's a wise idea. To me, bearings are an all or nothing thing. Put them all in, do them all or nothing. So that's where we are. That's why we've decided in the end that we're just gonna use the engine from 7J. So that's been a lot of deliberation, but I think we finally got it figured out what we're going to do. And actually, it's going to save us a lot of time because the internal components of that engine were in much, much better shape than the ones on 4G. If by some chance I run into a set of bearings for this engine, you bet. We'll put them in here. Maybe we'll get 4G's engine going again someday anyway. So there it is, the engine plan for 4G. 7J, it's the gift that keeps on giving, and we are still very appreciative to have that tractor. And I do want to give a shout out to Antique Crawler Parts up in Laramie uh, for their input and advice on what to do here. And also to Squatch, because he's got one of the older videos on how to decode Caterpillar state codes. So I would definitely check that one out if I was you. And I do want to thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And sadly, 4G9986. And sadly, and sadly, it actually was the last part. And sadly, this 4G9986's block in that tractor and match the rear end of that tractor, the tag on it. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh.